Greetings. If you haven't seen my previous video, I recommend checking it out for context. Inspired by Kay's capacitor dump circuit, an idea struck me. Why not leverage an Arduino Nano for comprehensive control? Imagine using it to monitor, manage charging, handle discharging, and even cease charging upon hitting a desired voltage threshold. Today, I'm excited to unveil what I've crafted based on this concept. Keep watching to discover the results. To kick things off, I'll initiate the process by configuring the voltage to 20 and the current to 100 milliamps. This deliberate setup will allow you to observe the gradual voltage increase on the meter. Take your time to witness this progression before the circuit triggers and discharges the capacitors into the 12 volt 8 watt incandescent load. As I establish the connection between the power supply and the load, you'll notice that the top LED illuminates, signifying the charging phase. Keep an eye on the meter as it slowly ascends, indicating the capacitor bank's gradual accumulation of energy. And when the Zener diode breaks down at approximately 18 volts, the circuit initiates the discharge cycle. Adjusting the delay in the discharge cycle, where 1000 corresponds to one second, can significantly impact the circuit's overall operation. As you observe the circuit's visual acceleration, it's important to note that the trigger time doesn't permit the capacitor to discharge below a certain voltage threshold. By manipulating the delay time, you can precisely fine-tune this circuit to suit your specific application requirements. An impressive safety feature comes into play when the load becomes disconnected. At that point, the charging cycle comes to a halt, and the capacitor voltage remains at a standstill indefinitely until the load is reconnected. This mechanism ensures a safe and controlled operation, preventing any unintended discharges or overloads when the load is not connected. Let's dive into some fun experimentation by observing how this circuit drives a small motor. However, it's worth noting that the discharge pulses might impact the longevity of the motor's brushes. As we explore, remember that not only does the delay time have consequences, but altering the input power also results in changes to the circuit's behavior. This insight will be valuable when utilizing the circuit for specific purposes, allowing us to make informed decisions to achieve desired outcomes while considering potential effects on components. When the motor experiences a load, there's a noticeable increase in amp draw. Remarkably, this circuit possesses a self-adjusting capability that seamlessly responds to the varying demand placed on it. This adaptive behavior ensures that the circuit accommodates the changing requirements imposed by the motor's load, maintaining optimal performance and stability. Let's observe a fascinating phenomenon as I modify the delay time to just one second. Pay attention to how this adjustment leads to an increase in the current output, providing me with higher amperage in response. This change in the delay time showcases the circuit's adaptability and responsiveness to manipulation, offering a dynamic demonstration of its capabilities. Once again, when I disconnect the loads, the cap charging halts. Imagine a scenario where I'm charging a battery, aiming to cease charging once it reaches a specific voltage, determined by a second Zener diode. To simulate this process, I'm employing a supercapacitor module. As the voltage climbs to 11.6 volts, the charging operation halts. However, if it subsequently drops to 11.5 volts, the charging recommences and halts once again at 11.6 volts. This ingenious approach ensures that the circuit maintains the battery's charge at a designated voltage, configured via a Zener diode, allowing for precise control over the battery's charging state. I formulated a hypothesis regarding the revitalization of batteries typically deemed irreparably dead. In essence, the idea is straightforward. Subjecting these batteries to pulses of 20 volts or higher, accompanied by a few amps of current, could potentially instigate a conditioning process within the plates. This process might render the plates more amenable to receiving a fresh charge, potentially even leading to an expansion of their capacity. Further experimentation is necessary to validate the efficacy of this concept. This particular sealed lead-acid battery comes with a recommended cycle use voltage range of 14.8 volts. Conversely, once the voltage drops to approximately 9.3 volts, the battery is typically regarded as fully discharged or dead. Jumping ahead to the following day, I've been employing a strategy of delivering 20 volt 2 amp pulses to the battery for several hours. Following each pulsing session, I allow the battery to rest for 10 minutes. Subsequently, I discharge it down to 11 volts, followed by another settling period. 
This reconditioning cycle has shown promising signs of progress, as the battery appears to be exhibiting a notable rebound in its performance. Prior to initiating the battery reconditioning process, it lacked the capacity to power the motor into motion. Pay close attention as I connect the motor, resulting in a noticeable voltage drop across the battery. What's intriguing is that, through the conditioning efforts, the battery has now gained the ability to deliver substantial torque to the motor, indicating a renewed potential. Notice as I disconnect the motor, the battery's voltage springs back, surpassing the 12 volt mark. This bounce back showcases the battery's regained vitality, a direct result of the reconditioning efforts. Well, I think I'll just keep cycling this battery and push it up to 14.8 volts to see how far its recovery goes. Also, I've got a couple of dead car batteries that I'm really curious about. I want to see what happens if I apply higher wattage pulses to them. It's all part of my hands-on exploration to understand battery behavior and recovery techniques on a larger scale. I believe that covers everything for this video. If you enjoyed the content, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like. Feel free to share your thoughts on whether I should proceed with designing a PCB for this circuit and making them available for purchase. Your input is invaluable. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.